Cheers. Cheers, man. Hey, Saturday night. Mm. Just two cool dudes Skyping on a Saturday. Yep. Nothing cooler than doing a podcast on a Saturday. <laughs> um, all right. So what, what's going on? Not much. Tell me. Talk Not to much. me. Talk to me. Okay. You would like me to? What did you do for Valentine's Day? Uh, well, I celebrate? went up to Auckland for good grief. So that was actually oh, how yeah. I spent that. Um, is that your television show? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it is. Um, that that's that was uh, the second season, the final week of their shoot was filming. And so we headed up, I, well, I say we, I headed up on uh, the last, basically for the last three days of it, um, which was 18 shoot days. And I was there for the last three. So I um, I disappeared. I, I didn't actually spend Valentine's Day there at all. So we, we, we did do so it was- a little on the night before. How was Ox? It was it was honestly uh it was good and it was weird at the exact same time because it just so happened to coincide with I don't know if you've seen any of the news, but um New Zealand has finally properly got COVID. Um the oh. the Omicron it Omicron is here. It's surging. It's the biggest it's ever been. Today we had nearly two thousand cases in the community. It's out. It's everywhere. There's um you know people in hospital. It it is finally after two years um properly got us. Um, two two thousand in the country or two thousand in Auckland. Two thousand in the country. Um, I think about oh. uh fourteen hundred or something today in Auckland. Um, but to give okay. you a perspective, it was. You know, we're getting maybe a dozen or so, you know, a couple dozen cases every day for, for basically all of this year. Then three weeks ago, it started to get around the 100 and everyone's like, oh, my gosh, 100 cases a day. Like that's that's getting up there now. That's a little bit worrying and just exponential growth. So over the the lead up to the uh, Valentine's Day weekend to, to me heading up to Auckland, um, the cases jumped from about 100 to 400. And I was thinking, oh, shit. And it is all basically concentrated in Auckland because that is such a, you know, a metropolitan hotspot. Um, mm-hmm. And I was m- genuinely musing, like, <sighs> I mean, it's the last three days of the shoot. It'd be fun to go up. But, like, should I go up? What's what's the associated risk with me heading up into the hot zone, not knowing necessarily what what potential government changes they might make and that sort of thing and then the uh, we went into red just before good grief started shooting so they had to then completely rejigger how they were going to shoot certain things because like the number of people you could have in a location changed and the the closeness of people you know the, the way you could film certain scenes like if you had an intimate scene with like um a kiss or something like that that was suddenly something that needed to be safety checked and all that kind of complexity had to, had to kiss with masks on have to kiss with masks on um or use Which ruins what we the did. continuity what we did yeah. was use mannequin heads so um it's right. just like they've gone into it like a That's i don't know like smart. a big w and just started licking all the the, the mo- models you know um which is fun by the way but it's pretty it. it's pretty accurate like it, it gives you that same sort of romantic feeling regardless um, yeah and it's safe and it's safe which was the, the ultimate yeah. goal um so, but that sort of thing threw everyone for a loop, and that that affected some of that procedure. And so then, yeah, mm-hmm. three weeks later, I was about to head up, and it just started to go like straight up. Um, and effectively, yesterday in the in the four days of that I was in Auckland, um, when I'd got there on the first day, cases were around four hundred, and when I left, it was two thousand. Um, so mm. it is now everywhere, <laughs> and New Zealand is properly. Got it, and you know it. It won't be long before Christchurch has it too. So, yeah, it it was a well, an interesting time to be up there. Well, speaking on behalf of the rest of the world, you're Thank all a you. bunch of pussies. Yeah. Um. And suck it, honestly. <laughs> well, thank you for your compassion and empathy. You deserve it. You've been sanctimonious and high horse and um you know elitist 
in yeah. a way over there. Uh-huh. Like, oh, in New Zealand, we're so pure, nothing comes here. Yeah. You know, we're a little island. Don't <laughs> don't come in and affect us. With an your... as well. Well, don't come and infect us with a Chinese virus, the yeah. Wuhan flu. Okay. Still funny though. That that is. I don't um, think so. Oh, Wuhan flu is one of the funniest things Trump's ever said. Oh, in true in Trump words, you mean? I mean, just objectively, it's funny. It's Wuhan flu. It's get why it's funny? Why is it funny? You Kung mean just flu, like the musical, r- like rhyme of it? Yeah, it's good. At, it's really it's, it's good at catchphrases. Well, that's say true. what you want about Trump. He's great at catchphrases. Yeah, because he only has the brain, uh, brain capacity for like two word or three word sayings, and then he just repeats it ad nauseum until it's drilled into everyone's brain. Well, it fucking works. I still remember crooked Hil- crooked Hillary, sleepy Joe Biden. <laughs> They're all in my brain. Yeah, you, <laughs> but you've it. got a broken brain, so that's not like a great example. I am a broken man. That's for yeah. sure. What are we talking about? New Zealand being uh, good grief. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Well, 2,000 cases, I guess. Yeah. I mean, now, we're now it's funny that we're now we're at uh, like 6,000 cases down from like 40,000 or whatever. And we're like, yeah, 6,000. But it's interesting, like the comparative point, like if you go back like six months even, and it was like, if we had. F- 10 cases like at the start of like another outbreak it'd be like oh shit 10 cases it's gonna kick off and now we have like if it's like it's it's only relative to the day before yeah so it's it's like if you have forty thousand cases and then the next day have twenty five thousand cases you're like yes yeah yeah we are killing this (laughs) yeah no well yeah i mean but aren't you curious to get it don't you want to get it no why would i want to get it because, you know, you see what the fuss is about. When I... People have, you know, like, I, serious yeah. long-term illness from it. No, they don't. Yes, they do. You don't, you don't believe that, do Of you? course I do. No, that's not true. Why? What do you mean Only, it's not true? People don't... Come on. Have, do you know anyone that's gotten sick from COVID? Well, not personally, because exactly. it's only just come out in Australia exactly. and New Zealand. Exactly, dude. Neither have I. Everyone that I know has gotten it. All the all the, the six people that I know that have definitely gotten it, none of them have been sick. So, come on. Well, I mean, you you just don't. I know fucking these things. probably had it. You, this is yes. anecdata. You're not making. How up. do we even know? How do we even know? Where the fuck is that this COVID come from? It actually exists. <laughs> have you ever seen a COVID? Oh, I've God. actually never seen one. You've never seen it. I've never fucking seen it. Yeah. Well, um, where's the proof? Well, on that cheery note, um, it uh, has been the subject of the um, protests in Wellington. I don't know if you've seen any of that, but you know, like the whole Canadian convoy thing? Oh, yeah. Um, Jordan Peterson's been tweeting about it. Oh, I bet he fucking has. Um, the the protest thing took off in, in Wellington, and it was started yeah. sincerely as it's like a anti-vax you know um you don't mandate this kind of government protest thing but was instantly um co-opted by the alt-right into this kind of um bullshit um like i don't know we call it like a sit-in where they've been camped in front of the parliament in front of a police blockade now for a couple of weeks um and like building little tent cities and and canvas cities and they put straw down because everyone was trushing it into like mud and they've just been sat there in their cars um and tooting the, what's that tooting their horns well yeah but also just like chanting and holding up signs and shit but it had become immediately uh like a conspiracy QAnon kind of alt right um you know, white nationalist bullshit to the point where the original organizers left the protest because <laughs> it wasn't about the vaccine mandates anymore. So now there's been this whole controversy for the past couple of weeks where they're all camped out. And I think just today they started actually, like the police have finally moved moved people along, like taking the cars and towed them away. Um, but yeah, yeah, there was this this big standoff. What's the um, What's the Canadian truckers thing? Do you know much about that? Well, it's the same same idea. It was like an anti-vax kind of fuck the government. Anti-mandate. Yeah, I believe so. The original. I'm not as um, up on as the, the New Zealand one. Um, it's, pretty, it's pretty wild that like during COVID, basically every pocket of the world has seen the same 
uh, resistance against it. Like, do you reckon that says anything about their cause? Do you think if you're seeing it all over the world, like literally the same protests erupting all over the world, do you think that speaks to uh, the their their message or their cause, or do you think it more speaks to uh, a, a kind of like a internet kind of era where people are kind of able to connect with people all over the world and share ideas? I think it's it's probably more the latter. So the Canadian thing was called the Freedom Convoy. It was about truckers, a convoy convoy of big rigs, um, basically driving for a week across Canada to get to the um, capital and like protests of vaccine mandates and COVID-19 measures. But I think it has just been capitalized on by people who saw an opportunity to um, like jump on to the social media spaces where these people were communicating and organizing and basically co-opted and, and basically, I don't know if the right word is astroturfing, but, but people went in there uh, pretending to be, you know, in line with the cause of the anti-vax thing, but then just nudged it you. until it became, you know, a racist or a, um, alt-right kind of movement more than it was the original policy. Um, but I think, as you say, it's it's because the internet exists that it even happened here in New Zealand. Like, it's a very strange position that we're in when this is occurring in New Zealand when it began in Canada. Like, geographically, that's not the kind of news that travels normally. Mm. It's only because there was coverage of it and a degree of shared spaces for alt-right kind of movements that I think that idea took hold here as well. Mm. I mean, they, I mean, they've got like a point. Like their message isn't. It's not like, like I know it's been co-opted by the old right in you know other pockets of the world as well. But I mean, it's not like they're crazy. Like they they are opposing to have uh, opposing having things, um, may like opposing having what what's the wording here? Opposing having things being put in their body. I mean, I kind of get it. But that's not, like, actually what's happening, though, right? Like, no one's actually forcing it. They just don't like the idea that, for instance, if they choose not to do that, some other privileges of society become inaccessible to them. Like, sure. um, you know, getting to go and eat in restaurants. That's not a vaccine yeah. mandate. No one's forcing them in the body, but they but don't like the it's idea a, that it's... it's a back. It's a backdoor way of doing it. It's like it's basically the in in essence, it's the same thing. It's They're not like, the same thing. If you, we're not we're not forcing you to do it, but if you don't do it, society is going to turn its back on you. Yeah, that's not forcing you to do it. You can't create those things. That's just it's consequences for not. It's not essentially the same thing. It's it's it isn't forcing you to do it. There is a very clear distinction. It is a consequence for your action, and no one else that chooses to re-enter society and has the empathy and concern to get a vaccine and help protect the people around them um, should be subject to the choice of those people. And that choice not to get a vaccine is perfectly, you know, they're perfectly entitled to do it, but it has consequences for the safety of the rest of the community. And so no one else should be forced to suffer that risk just because someone else wants to. It is not the same thing. I regret getting vaccinated. <laughs> for fuck's sake. Welcome to Deep Thought, everybody. Um, this is a podcast. Um, I'm feeling like it's a spicy one. I don't know where this energy is today, but it's 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 got it's some spice to it. from beer. Okay, there it goes. Um, sitting through the internet with me this week, Michael. Hello, good to see you. What's up, motherfuckers? And I'm Nick. Hello. Hey. Great. Great. Where have you been drinking? Where have you been out today? I just went um, and there's a pub opposite my house, so... <laughs> <laughs> This is not a good idea for a, new a borderline alcoholic. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, just had had a couple a couple of beers in the sun. So I see you know you're I mean? you're still actively vaping. Um, has, yep. has this uh, settled into a rhythm now for you? You know, I've been vaping slightly less. Okay. So when I first started vaping, I was in the honeymoon phase. Yeah, when you first became and a vapist. Yes. Um, and now I've kind of curtailed that a little bit. So okay. I'm going through a vapor week now at this I don't rate. Know, I don't know how to 
quantify that? Well, it's 20 bucks a week. Okay. So, you know, so I've got, I'm in control of it. But the weird thing is. Um, How much would you spend on cigarettes a week previously? Probably $30 a week. Okay. Um, but the irony is I wouldn't smoke. I would only smoke when I drink. Mm-hmm. Um, so, but with the vape, I smoke uh, a vape endlessly all through the day. Yeah. Yeah. So I have a full on nicotine addiction now, whereas before I don't think I had a nicotine addiction. So I think I've passed up the cigs, but developed a pretty strong <laughs> nicotine addiction. So you, you, when you first started, you were like, I'm going to make sure that I get the one with the addictive properties, not the sort of just flavor gel gas shit, right? What would be the point? There's no point. There's no point in that for me. Like, what? I just am going to blow flavored smoke into my lungs. Well, and get yeah. No yeah. I'd use it as a way to try it. and, like, actually quit and get healthier. No, I don't think that's for me. <laughs> Being healthier. <I> don't. <laughs> I'm healthy ish. I'm healthy, you know. I've got, I got vices. I got, I'm a big vice guy. I'm okay. collecting vices. Yeah. What's, uh, I mean, vice is just a very strong euphemism for, um, like, addict <laughs> addiction. <laughs> I definitely have Bad an addictive habits. personality. It's funny when you say I have an addict. I found myself saying this the other day. I was like, I have an addictive personality, but you could also say you're an addict because people say that as well. Like, I'm, I'm an addict, right? It's the same thing, right? Yeah being an addictive personality and ha- being an addict. But yeah. it's like everything, my brain is just like my brain, <laughs> like it's separate from me. I'm like, the I want the, the extremes of everything all the time. You know, gambling, yeah, drugs, nic- by that I mean nicotine, not any other drugs because no, I know my dad's listening. About, yeah, we're talking about normal um, drugs. Alcohol, that's it. Pain medication. Quaaludes, heroin. <laughs> uh, but it is like, I do want, this is why the Radiohead lyric, everything all the time, is my favorite lyric. And I want to get it tattooed on my face. Because it's like, it's a long, everything. That's a long phrase for a facial tattoo. Everything all of the time. <laughs> no. Like, do you, go, in do you go full of the way, like from sort of left chin up and around the forehead and back down again? I'm thinking just like moustache. Moustache. Like, <laughs> okay, so get, get laser hair removal on the upper lip so you never grow any facial hair again, but then just mm. very small word print radio head lyrics across the upper lip. Exactly. I think that's a good look. I always, think, I always laugh when I see like guys who've got head tattoos, you know, like the head tattoo. You probably don't see it much in New Zealand, but in Fitzroy you do. Mm. And they, they shave their head, but they've still clearly got hair there. I'm like, you, you just need to show off your tattoos, don't you? Yeah, I am um, at the gym I go to. I'm sort of in what used to be a a, a slightly a dodgier part of town, I suppose. And there's definitely like gang members that go to my gym, and they have like mm. the full on like facial tattoos. Um, and they're that's hot. They're an intimidating look. You don't like it? Uh, yeah. I just that doesn't seem like a fun place to get a tattoo out of all the places. It's a strong move it's a strong one. move yeah would you ever get a tattoo no i think we've talked about this previously i would just never be confident in my choice mm. nothing yeah, that i'd be absolutely PFI. sure i'd want for like years on end yeah you don't really have an artistic eye that's a good point no yeah um it just it would be a mistake i think um speaking of mistakes got an update on the van oh okay this is the third podcast in a row with van news. Last well, last episode was a um, saga. Yeah, no, it is. It is a saga now. Um, yeah. The last episode, correct me if I'm wrong. We left it with your. Well, in fact, we started that episode very recently, having discovered that you were going to have to pay two thousand dollars, where you thought you were going to get away with it. Um, so, what's the news yeah. now? So when I, when I yeah when I last spoke about, I had just gotten the email saying. It's not going to be 500 bucks as we initially estimated. It's going to be two grand. Yeah. And then we recorded the pod and I was devastated. By the way, I didn't know that my dad listens to the podcast. And I got, when we, when we released it, I got a call from my dad who was 
quite angry. <laughs> um, <laughs> first of all, about the fact he was like, what, what the hell is this about the van? You know, um, well, I mean, not he wasn't necessarily angry. He wanted, he wanted to help, but he was, you know, concerned, you know, sad for me. Yeah. And then also um, kind of pissed off that I uh, told you that he didn't actually like your Christmas song. <laughs> yes. Um, he did which reach he, out to me and, and confirm it. He reached out. Um, so I want to officially apologize for that, Daddy. Apology accepted. Um, and okay, so I think I told you on the last one that my sister, who is my favorite sister, and also a lawyer, sister. she's my fave. She's also your least favorite um, sister. Very, very smart, very attractive. Okay. Very. What um, is okay? You need to really work out what okay. this sentence is. <laughs> okay. I'll take a mulligan. Okay. Um, my f- my sister, who's a, a hotshot lawyer, very smart, very attractive. Oh, shit. Okay. You, you've <laughs> got me full right back into it. Well, um, she advised... So, she was very proactive. She also listened to the podcast. Apparently, my family. Your whole family. Fans. Yeah. Um, uh, she rang me and she said... All right, here's what you got to do. You got to lowball them because they're a car next door, just got bought out by Uber, so they got plenty of money. Yeah. But at this point, they they're saying you owe us 2 grand. They were they they're just preoccupied and concerned with getting the money out of me. Yeah. So she says lowball them. Yeah. And I'm like I'm a non confrontational guy. Yeah. Uh you know, I don't like I don't like ruffling for any feathers yeah. ever. You know, no. I'm not a feather ruffler. No, despite um, the start of this podcast and every episode previously, and all the other yeah. evidence to the contrary. Yeah, yeah, you're not a feather ruffler. No. Nah. Um. Uh. She says, give them a call, lowball them. So she she reckons go five hundred. Offer them, say I got five hundred bucks with your name on it, car next door. Yeah. I'm happy to write the check, but then we call it even, Do I put baby. it to Mr. Next Door or? <laughs> um, car next door are they, them. <laughs> um, and so I I actually emailed them because I'm a pussy and I didn't want to call anyone. I hate calling people. You actually did legitimately <laughs> just correctly they, them, them. <laughs> you just you actually correctly just you said I emailed them, which is the correct way to use they them pronouns. So you did it well, unintentionally. I stumbled into wokeness. You did. Um uh, so I did. They so they sent me so t- I replied to the email where they said, This is what you owe, blah blah blah. Here's the breakdown of the cost, here are the quotes. And I said to them very nicely, I said, Hey motherfuckers, um I I can pay a thousand dollars. I couldn't, didn't have the heart to say uh, uh, five hundred dollars. Mm-hmm. So I can pay a thousand dollars, and that's it. And they came back to me. They called me, and they said, "How about this? You pay us five hundred dollars up front now, mm-hmm. today, mm-hmm. and then." We'll put you on a, a payment plan for the next five hundred dollars. So they just t- absolutely just accepted it. Yeah, wow. So I got a thousand dollars off. Yeah, that's half price. I know. So it fucking worked. Yeah. So But then the, the difficult thing was you then had to pay Laura a thousand dollars for her legal services. So you ended out. Her the retainer exact same place. Her, t- her retainer was a thousand dollars. So it yeah. kind of came out in the wash. But <sighs> you know, at least, at least it's, it's going in to the my sister. Yeah. Who's yeah, super so, hot. Um, incredibly attractive yeah um sorry i'm just getting a call should i answer this call (laughs) (laughs) the best joke here would be to completely delete that so that there is no evidence you ever called and thus (laughs) evidence (laughs) that i do edit the podcast (laughs) completely destroying his cameo Uh, um so funny i forget what we're talking talking about. about oh the van yes the van I think yeah, we sort of so, finished the van, didn't we? Yeah, okay. Yeah, you wrap we did. it up. We got, got a grand it. off, so stuck it to the man. Yeah. Fuck Uber. Fuck car next door. Um, that's a win for the little guy. Yeah. Um, the little guy who damaged another little guy's personal property. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just confirming. 
Even let go. <laughs> I mean, he's still, he's still, wait, he's still getting paid because they pay him. They regardless. will definitely fix it for him. Is that what you're saying? Oh yeah. So he's he's right. So he's, it's he's ju- covered. He's good. He's sweet. He's sweet. Yeah. Okay. Um, well then, yeah. It's just them. Sure. Yeah. Well, that's a happy oh, outcome. Happy Thank you, um, lawyer sister. Yes. Big shout out to Laura. Thank you. You are my favorite, and. Don't do, I keep Don't do it. Don't do it. Speaking of hot sisters, how's your how's Georgie doing? Okay, that's not a segue we're using. Um, she's doing <laughs> she's doing all right. Um, she's uh, uh, I think just this past week her housemate got COVID. So after having had COVID uh, a month ago and getting through it, um, just and- to isolate. Yeah, so she was just the other side of that 30-day, like, oh. immunity window, and then her housemate got it, and then she had to go back into ISO <laughs> because of uh, because of the housemate. So um, I think she's doing fine, but it, it does, you know, that's not much fun, as you'd imagine. Mm. Yeah, that sucks. That's, that's like you you know you're not you're probably not going to get it, you know but you fine. just have to stay in your house. Yeah, so um, irritating. But, I, I mean, we don't even have anything quite like that here i don't think that it hasn't been numbers enough to make that a a kind of relevant policy consideration um but that might come that way soon um depending on how Mm. this this outbreak goes um but i think some of the modeling i was seeing here was suggesting that it could get up to ten thousand cases a day or something in the next month and maybe then level up after that so potentially yeah this is when it all happens yeah well you'll you'll get it Mm, I don't want it. You want it. It's fine. Well, yeah. Okay, I don't want to retread where we were at the start of this podcast. <laughs> let's just do it. Let's just do it again. Yeah. Um well, maybe what I'll retread much- is to say just more specifically about good grief that it was uh um really cool to pop up and see the um the second season um as all the the crew and everything had been working hard for a month and and just popped up to to see a little bit and they were all, you know, hilarious scenes and and working so freaking hard um i'm really excited to see it come together it looks fucking beautiful um so i i feel like we're we're in a a good position as we head into post-production now Um, i I can't wait for you all to see it well i can't wait to see it are you um so are we uh, i had a question earlier from a friend is this going to be because it's on amc yes yeah is this going to be uh, on streaming services uh, other than SBS? Uh, I don't know the answer to that. I would think not. Well, actually, I actually just don't know the answer to it. I don't know if the AMC networks and Sundance Now and that sort of thing are accessible in Australia or not, so I, I don't know the answer to that. But I would guess that first port of call is likely to be back to SBS. But, okay. yeah, that's above my pay grade. Cool. Well, that's fine. But um, the uh, we, it's six episodes, but they're all sort of now full half hours, so they should average probably around twenty three minutes, I think, um, instead of the the fifteen to twenty that they were last time. Um, and that was quite a bit more content that we were shooting, and and quite um, long days. I think they're quite regularly doing fourteen hour days, um, trying to get in all of the um the pages that were allocated for for filming that day. Um, so very fast paced, but um, it looks like it's it was achieved, um, which is a testament cool. to everyone's hard work. Oh, awesome! Um, well, um, be sure to let me know if there's any broker song you don't want to use. As okay, well. do we need to yeah. talk about it? No, we don't. Well, I got paid. You did get paid, um, and we did put it in the promos. We, um, I, 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 I suggested and got. Uh, permission from brokers to use one of their songs in the first season of good grief and then it was going to be over the credits and then it turned out that our credit sequence had to be different for the network it had to be it had to be good (laughs) (laughs) they said sorry we're just concerned this isn't good Um, (laughs) it had to be those like lower third credits where it it comes up (laughs) under the final scene rather than just like a over black at the end um, yeah. And so that meant that you're still just in dialogue right to the very last second of the show. So there's there wasn't really music that would sit there yeah. where there's 
Whereas something like an HBO show or, or something which which plays out the whole credits, you often have a, a final credit song which then trails for another minute afterwards, uh, which was the original intention. So I'm sorry that despite my best efforts, it didn't make the cut. I'm over it, honestly. Yeah. You got paid? Fuck a grief. Okay. <laughs> hey, at least you're still calling it good grief now and not good queef, which was what you were doing for uh, about a year. I say that behind closed doors. Oh, okay, good. <laughs> I just got this uh, message from Dave. <laughs> Him in his shirt again. He said, in honor of chatting with you, tell Nick, big fan. Oh, very sweet, Dave. This is still I, not I making me say, <laughs> It's actually uh, a bit of a theme with my friends. They just like you so much more than me. <laughs> like <laughs> friends that you have that haven't met. One of my friends, Steph, she she was drunk one night Steph and she Coughlin. was no 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 different Steph. Steph Jones. Okay, she was uh, giving me a piece of her mind, and she she was listening to it on a, a long road trip from Canberra. She was just like, you know, Nick. It's just a bit more likable than you. He says things more articulately. He's funnier. And I was like, oh. I wasn't even, I would, this is unprompted. Yeah. Oh, what else did she say? Oh my God. So she, they, she listened to the Christmas episode, right? Mm-hmm. And she was like, <laughs> she said, it's funny how Nick's, Nick's career is just going like through the roof. He's got a TV show. He's doing an escape room. He's doing all these things. And you just like left a relationship and you're kind of like moving. She was like, what the, f-? I was like, what the fuck? Comparing life to life. Yeah. Jeez. Well, she's like, Nick's like just going, you know, bonkers with his life. And you are you know, you're just kind of sort of plateaued, if not declining, I guess. Yeah. Well, thank you, Steph. Um, this won't no, no, make no, the no, edit, no, but, um, <laughs> Yeah, uh, th- uh, that is the benefit of being the one to edit it, is I can make myself sound more articulate and just leave in all of your mistakes. So it is actually institutional bias. Um, See, people don't believe me when I say that. It's I sound like an idiot. When I sound like an idiot. It's, it's because, because I've made it that, yeah. When I sound smart, that's just me. No, that's my that's editing me. as well. <laughs> no, 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 no. That's my natural state. Yeah. Uh, um, what else have we got on the menu? Uh, we, uh, anything topical? There's Ukraine stuff going on. Anything? Any? 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 Um, Ukraine interests? Shout out to my homies in Ukraine. Yeah. Um, it looks like Russia. Well, wasn't Russia retreating? Fifty percent of they- Russia's ground forces are along the Ukrainian border. Motherfuckers. Yeah. I heard that though. Um. It sounds because they've got a hundred thousand troops along the border of Ukraine and Russia, and it sounds like a lot, but apparently it's actually not that much, considering uh, Ukraine's military. Mm. So Ukra- Ukraine, with the amount of troops that are stationed there at the moment, Ukraine could easily fuck them up. Okay, and also it'd, it'd be a weird move for them to basically start a war. Yeah, but I mean, they did sort of do the whole Crimea thing, right? Yeah, Crimea River. Has that joke been done? Probably, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, and that's you. And that's that's the news. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was hoping that as a Ukrainian, you might have some insight or emotions or political feelings or know-how or you know, input, um, educated, you know, commentary, some form of context that you could add or. Just anything really to to make the discussion worthwhile. But yet again, what do you think you thought wrong? Um, here's my thoughts on, on the Ukraine situation. Ukrainian food sucks. <laughs> it's just it's like the cuisine of Ukraine is so clearly uh, based in um, like poverty and like war. It's just like what do we have in the kitchen? We got potatoes, salt, some water. Let's do it. This that was the worst Ukrainian accent. All right, let me try it again because that was like <laughs> Middle Eastern. Wait, what is my Michael? I'm just trying to channel channel my my grandma. Yeah, I'll, I'll give you a second. I'm going to step back. I'm just going to give you a space. 
Um, you find the voice, you get into character, and then okay. uh, you know do your monologue. They've got it. We've got potatoes, beetroot, salt, put together. Uh, it's just going it goes Middle Eastern. What the fuck is wrong with me? It's okay. You're getting in your head. Just just take a second. Just <sighs> you know, picture Ukraine, those beautiful green fields, the soaring no green mountains. Fields. Oh, I found the... it. I found it. I just Fjords. I found it. There's there's no green fields though in in Ukraine. The there's only, the rolling there's corn only fields. fields. No, as no, golden no. as the eye can see. Oh, no, Tall no, no. skyscrapers touching the sky, clouds <laughs> peeking over the edges. There is no skyscrapers in Ukraine. Large bats flapping through the air. We have many bats, actually. <laughs> yes, very many bats. That's just Borat. Fuck, I'm stuck <laughs> at accents now. We haven't done Impression of the Week for a long time, so to be fair, it is, yeah, on, because it is on me. I think, it got, I think Impression of the Week got cancelled. It, it was our first segment. <laughs> <laughs> We yeah. cancelled it ourselves. We and by we, I mean we, <laughs> and not just you. <laughs> okay, I sense well, checked it. Well, that's uh, our Ukraine update. Um, thank you to all our dedicated listeners. I hope that was informative, and you know helps you understanding this complex geopolitical situation. Um, we'll be back next week with more. I hope you um, make a jingle for this Ukraine news. <laughs> No, I said Ukraine update. I very specifically tried to do a segment which wasn't just news at the end. I can kind of visualize it now, actually. Okay, well, you can, can do the, you can do the jingle. Well, I don't actually have capacity to do any music at the moment, apart from okay. playing around on my piano. Okay, fine. Oh, I'm just a sad sack of stories, aren't I? Yeah, this is real fun. <laughs> what else? Um, I, was... I love that we're just like this. Com- this podcast is now like, uh, what else do we talk about? Like we're just making <laughs> conversation. Well, I mean, it's always been making conversation. It's just that it hasn't been much conversation to make. Do you, Do you think that um, I just this prompted me like thinking of making conversation? Like you make conversation. You know when people say, "I'm going to take a piss" or "I'm going to take a poo." Right? No one says I'm going to take like, a poo. I suppose you say take a <laughs> shit. You do say take a shit. I'll take a that. shit. Yeah. You're like, take is like, you know, receiving. So, I mean, what are, what are we doing? Well, <laughs> I don't know about you, but it's like, for me, taking a shit means you give a poo. put my hand underneath <laughs> the and toilet. like, just pull it out. <laughs> <laughs> Foul. Yeah. You gross son of a bitch. I love Look, it. You, you let into it. Um, yep, you've you've discovered an interesting linguistic anomaly. Welcome How to the that, English guys? language. Yeah. How about that? Is that a is How that about a that? is that a myth? Not not a myth. You Just... don't mind that it exists. No, I like it. I say it. Okay. It's not like do Melbourne or, or something where you were. Oh no, that wasn't even you. That was Cas. Yeah, Casper. Um, Who's moving to Spain, by the way? He's moving to Spain. He's moving. He's going home to New Zealand for a couple of weeks, and then he's moving to Spain. Yeah, geez. Um, it does reinforce, I think, that the suspicion that most of the Casper's myths or whatever he called it were just personal issues he had with you, because now he's actually leaving the country to get away with you. Yes, actually, that's that's true. Although he did clarify, oh, it doesn't matter. No, it doesn't. It honestly doesn't matter. Sure. Are we going to talk about that, right? No. I saw the new Jackass movie. Oh, yeah? At the cinema. Okay. You a fan of the Jackass? You don't seem like you are. Of course not. Yeah. No. A lot of dicks in it, so maybe you like it. Mm, Old dicks. (laughs) Damaged dicks. They're pretty old. Yeah. Crooked. Mm. Um, But it's a a good time, you know. Um, It is very silly it's very silly indeed but uh it's 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 nice to have it's a movie because like, um, it's sort of david from uh, margaret and david it's very silly indeed <laughs> um it's nice because it's certified fresh and rotten tomatoes so it's it's nice to have a movie in the era that we're living in nick the okay. era where everything's sanitized and padded and uh 
not wanting to offend anyone, that there is a movie where it's just pure, there's no narrative, it's just like pure slapstick humor. I mean, if you trace back humor back to its origins, it's it, it's a falling monkey over. falling out of a tree. Yeah. Right? And this is exactly, it's pure, pure comedy with no frills. I mean, to... The, the fact that, that that the movie is doing as well as it is and it's you know it's just a fun time and people aren't getting offended by it i think that's a that's a win for humanity well it was interesting because i think correct me if i'm wrong wrong this is the only jackass film to get a positive rotten tomatoes or maybe is maybe it? not quite that but like definitely the first one came out was just like panned everyone hated it and then over 20 years the public sentiment has come along and it's actually you know, tilted towards positivity over the time. Because oh, I really? have also I heard, like, that. this was, you know, a very well-received film as far as Jackass movies go. Well, they're all they're all in their 50s now, and yeah. they're kind of, they the old, they've got a couple of new new guys in there um, doing new stunts, but the old guys are revisiting stunts that they did when they started making the show. Yeah. So they've got Johnny Knoxville, you know, uh, getting fucked up by a ball and stuff um which is like something that he did back in the day and ages ago yeah it's you know it's it's like a it's a, an homage to themselves but they've got also there's like this yeah, i know this is probably boring well no you, but because one of them died right and there was there was yeah. like very revealing um, Ryan interviews Dunn. with i think johnny knoxville and maybe one of the others saying like how they'd felt like emotionally broken since then, and it's all it really like fucked them all up, and that this was like a tribute to it in some ways, and like catharsis for like grieving, and and like had this kind sure. of strange emotional quality to it for them. Yeah, I think if you if you look back as as I have with my housemates recently, um, through the earlier movies, they uh, they do seem to be. There's a couple of them that have like they're younger. They're in their twenties and then their thirties, and they're they're drinking and they're partying. They're all they're all skateboarders and stuff, you know. And um, and, and Spike Jones is just weirdly in that crew and directing those movies, so, yeah. <laughs> which is crazy. Yeah. Um, but um, there's a couple of them. Ryan Dunn, I guess, and and Bam Magira, who kind of went off the rails. Yeah. They they're all kind of drinking, but if you look back on it. With the with the context that you have of of time, you can kind of tell that like all right, they they look like they have issues, or they they look like they're drinking for you know a, another reason other than fun mm. or just having fun. Yeah. Um. And then Bam Magira in this one, so Bam they well, he wrote sued into them, his right? contract. So he they stipulated that when they're making this movie that um, he had to be sober. And then apparently he uh, got on like Dexies or something like that, and they were like, "Nah, like you're you're out." And then he went on this like Instagram and was live. That, was that for like a safety reason, a care for him reason, a care for him? Yeah, right. Because he was, uh, yeah, he was, he'd had trouble getting messed with it. up. Yeah. So they said you have to if you want to be in this film, you have to be sober. Um, and then he yeah, got done for Dexies and stuff. Went on these Instagram live rants, what have you. Weirdly. He's in one scene in this, and he's not given a credit. He's not given any. He's like he he's not in it at all. So he's basically been written out of the whole thing. Yeah, which uh, you know would suck for him because he's like I mean this, this is obviously millions of dollars for these guys. Yeah, um, yeah, I'd, I'd seen that sort of um, coverage talking about the the legal issues because it was delayed. I feel like it was a delayed release thing and not just for COVID reasons. Like, I, I think they actually had to resolve whether or not, like, some of that legal shit um, with what he was entitled to because I think he claimed that he'd come up with some of the stunts and then someone else had done it and he needed to be paid for the yeah. ideas of doing it even if he wasn't in the film and all that kind of thing. So it's just yeah. um, it's interesting to see how if you work together with people for 30 years, sometimes that shit, you know, percolates or brews and you have these old resentments come through and... Yeah. Yeah. I think like guys like um Johnny Knoxville and, and Steve O. I mean Johnny Knoxville I was thinking this in the movie that he's like he's kinda like p- 
positioned himself so perfectly as like the leader of them. Like he's the one he's who's always going, I'm hi, I'm Johnny Knoxville and this is Jackass. You know, it's like he's like always front and center. He's never doing like the fucked up stunts. He's always like doing it on other people. Yeah. And he's like this this guy who's just like gotten he's in other movies now. He's his own he's his own like entity. Yeah. And meanwhile, the other guys are just kind of orbiting him. He's not even, you know, he's he's doing a few of his own stunts, but nowhere near as, you know, all the stunt. It would be all the stunts that you uh, wanted to do if you were in that crew. Yeah, he's doing those ones, and and no one blinks an eye. Yeah, he's like the um the 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 lead singer. He he puts himself front and center. I mean, that's that's. I mean, to have the wherewithal to do that. I mean, but he's always done it, so mm. I don't know. Yeah, yeah that's Jackass. Um, have you watched Murderville? I watched two apps. Loved it. Quite good. Yeah, quite good. Quite good. Got uh, a yeah. few laughs in there. I love the one with Conan. I, I got a lot of affection for Conan. Um, I love he Conan's. He knows. He knew the brief walking into that. Like, he knew exactly what he needed to be and to do. Some of the I was thinking that like he's he's had tra- his 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 show's given him training for yeah. it because he's he needs to improvise in in late night. Yeah. It feels like a first season for me in the sense that you can sense in the sense that you can sense that they are still working it out. Um and some of the stuff feels a little forced where for instance there's one scene where they've decided that for like physical comedy reasons Conan has to eat really hot food during the scene. And it's like you don't, you don't need a crutch like that. There's another one where it's like you I have to do that. push-ups, or there's another one where you have to like. I loved it. Uh, I just feel like it's I it's it so like... unnecessary, and there's actually not that much improv or like back and forth from the 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 guests. Oh come on, that's just fun. In. That's fun. Yeah, it, I thought that was hilarious. I think I feel it feels like a crutch to me. Crutch. Yeah, it doesn't need it. I don't know. It feels like they didn't oh. trust in their stars to be funny enough on their own, so they they. They populated every episode with something there just to like have a gimmick. Uh, lighten up, Grandma. Okay. It's just fun. He's pouring hot sauce on his food. He's like, take another bite. I mean, I was in stitches over here. Okay. I feel like you're in a very combative <laughs> mood today. Yeah, baby. <laughs> well, um, watch the others. I'm interested to see what you think um, by the end of it. They got a lot of. A lot of get the. I don't know any of the guys on there. Like the the guests that they have, you know. I've, I know Kamal and and Conan and who else is Kamal, there? Kamal, yeah. Sharon Stone, Neil. Ken Jong. No, oh Ken. Yeah, um, but um, also Kamal. Um, Kamal, yeah. He's not funny. Like when he's buff, I don't like it. He's too vain. Like now that now that I know that he's vain, he's not funny. I don't so think he's vain. He needs, He's fucking what the fuck? He's fucking vain. He's Why? like he's always talking about his fucking body and shit. No, but he's always, everyone he's like, else brings it up. Yeah, because it's fucking lame, dude. It's fucking lame that he did that. I hate it. What are you talking about? He's not about? funny anymore. Oh, he's not okay. fucking funny anymore, dude. You haven't watched his he's episode. He's like he's too into his body and then when he gets asked about it, he tries to do like the humble thing and it's fake. And I hate that shit. And also I said also, but I didn't have another point. Okay. I just thought I'd find it. <laughs> what is where, where is this vibe coming from tonight? Um, you need. To oh no, re- he keeps doing these looks. He he thinks he's like hot now. I think he thinks he's hot, <sighs> and I hate it when people think that they're hot. The um, you should read the. Uh, I can't remember where it was. There was a big interview they did with him recently, where they talked um, after the fact of it all, and it it goes into how like much he regretted putting up like the photo of his before and after and and how like traumatic the past few years have been for him because of the way that everyone has now gone to that as the sole focus of his personality and behavior and everything so i think there's like actual (laughs) real misgivings internally that he's had about what that that change has had i don't think it's made him less funny but i think it's definitely defined the way that everyone now sees him and speaks about him which would be very disconcerting well, that's his own fault, you know. He he did it because but his own everyone greed. else, you know, like at fucking Paul Rudd wasn't ripped, and then he got ripped for Ant Man, and you know, yeah, but Paul Rudd's an angel. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> I 
everyone loves Paul Rudd. He get, but Paul Rudd was kind of like an actory, a guy who was funny. Kamal was a funny guy Kamal. who tried to get into like the action. He, didn't he do like a Marvel movie? Yes, that recently? was the whole point. That was yes. Marvel got Fucking him buff. lame, dude. Oh my god! Okay. Like just like come on, like just be funny. Just be a funny guy. You don't need to be a, like I just I just Why hate is it, that shit, dude. Uh, I hate what shit. I hate it when funny guys try to be hot. It's like it takes away from the comedy. If you're a hot guy who is funny, a la me, you it, you can get away with it. <laughs> Did I use a la wrong? Then? <laughs> no, that wasn't the problem with that sentence. <laughs> you can be a, you can be a hot guy who happens to be funny. That's good. You can't be a funny guy who becomes hot. Ridic. You're yes. you're dropping some really irritating takes this episode, and I'm not here for it. Are you? Am I irritating you? Oh, it's just it's just this vibe. I don't know where it is, but it's 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 rubbing the wrong way. I'm here to I'm here to like defend the vibe for you that I'm bringing. Yeah, yeah, you you coming you're coming out you're swinging, dude. This is just for entertainment purposes. I don't believe any of the shit I say. <laughs> Uh, uh, if you've enjoyed this sort of thing, um, well, good news. There's you have plenty it. of. It. If you're the only person who enjoyed this sort of thing, um, congratulations. Uh, there is plenty more of it where this came from in the Deepfoot archive. You can find it at deepfoot.podbean.com. You can find links and other commentary at our Facebook page. You can find little clips from this on Instagram. You can find our songs on Spotify and on SoundCloud. You can send us your myths and your questions and your comments to deepfoot at gmail.com. And you can generally just try to be a better person in your life and see what effect it has on the people around you. Um, just something to think about. Nice. Michael. Um, <laughs> um, let's, I was, let's dial this up. Dude, it's Saturday night. Come on, let's turn this up to well, look, 11. I, 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 had a, I had an ace up my sleeve, and I don't know if now's the time to play cards, <sighs> but I, I do. I think it's now. I, 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 this, is, this, will end, this will be the end of the show. Are you ready to do it? Did that answer your question? Okay. Uh, it's 2022. I feel like we all need something to sort of perk up 2022. I don't know about you, but it's feeling like it wasn't living up to our expectations. We're hoping for more. We were hoping for brilliance. We're hoping for an upward trajectory, more of the same. Mm. I feel like we need communally as a society, something to go, yes, I'm ready. The world is getting better. Things are happening again and we're all feeling good. Uh, I love it. So I reckon it's time for fucking Bitly Ball. (gasps) Oh! Okay, 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 yeah, I'll do it. Is that your reaction? That's what you're going with? That's your canonical reaction? Some kind of strange Billy Madison vaping? I'm in a weird mood, man. Bleep. 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 Okay, gosh, it's been a while, it's been a few episodes, time to bring it back, I think, have a little bit of fun to round out this episode. Um, I feel like we all kind of have an idea of what Bitly Ball is now, but if you have not, and this is your first time in very brief terms, there is a website called bit.ly, which lets you abbreviate URLs on the internet. It also lets you customize what that shortened URL is. So for instance, if you wanted to link to uh, Michael's van repair shop, you could go and create a link at bit.ly slash Michael's van repair. Um, that would then uh, redirect you to your actual website of choice. So the game of Bitly Ball is a game of guessing. We are going to try and guess the extension the custom uh, short phrase that someone might have chosen to append onto bit.ly. And we will get points if we correctly guess it. We have never tested these before. These are sight unseen, off the top of the bean. Um, The longer the phrase, the more letters in it, the more points you get. It's one point per letter. So if you guess a 12 letter phrase, you will get 12 points. However, if you get to a page which no longer loads properly, you score no points. And if you go to a, uh, a URL which has never been used before by Bitly, has never been entered, 
It is a complete 404. Um, you will have that guess deducted from your score. So it's a real risk and reward kind of game. Do you play safe? Do you go short? Or do you try and swing big? Uh, okay. I feel like we're all on board. Michael. Sorry, I wasn't listening to that. Can you repeat the rules? <laughs> okay. I'm here. Yes, I'm, I'm well aware. Um. <laughs> Oh. That was no, fun. This is fun. Um, uh, Michael, would you like to kick us off? Oh boy. Bit.ly slash what? I'm going to play at medium. Okay. I don't know why this is in my head. <laughs> okay, that's okay. This is part of the. This is a part of the psychological fun. Pillow talk. Pillow talk. Okay. Pillow talk is. A 10 character guess. So if we go to bit.ly slash pillow talk, are you ready, Michael? Yep, ready. Three, two, Spaghetti. one. Oh, that's a fail. That is a fail. What? Here's the thing it has redirected to the hotel of your dreams.com slash hashtag pillow talk. So this is a neutral. You have not lost points because someone has used it. It just no longer exists. So zero points for you, but no deduction. I'll take zero points. You take a zero. Okay. This has set me up for a decent first stab. Now, can I just clarify? You haven't thought of anything before and written them down. No, this list of paper that I'm looking over here, unrelated. Okay. All of these lines here with those words, just ignore it. I believe you. Um, my first guess. Uh, okay, here we go. Team. Here we go. Uh, my first guess is... Oh. <laughs> I, okay, this is going to sound contrived now, but we did forget to mention uh, the porn rule. If you end up with pornography unintentionally, um, it is double points. <laughs> yes. um, Wait, I just realized I'm on my work computer, so I have to actually that's... switch to my phone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that might be that might be a smart choice. Um, it, it came up because I suddenly realized the implications of what I was about to propose, which is uh, bit.ly slash chocolate fantasy. Um, 16 letters. Okay, dude. Uh, just, I was thinking chocolate. Is this is... <laughs> Is this a, a, a website you've been on? <laughs> no. Um, okay. Is so, this a thing that you were into? No, I was just, I was feeling like it might be like a Cadbury related competition or something like that. Sure. <laughs> yeah. That's what it sounds like to me. Yeah. B-I-T dot L-Y slash chocolate fantasy. Uh-huh. How do you spell chocolate? Just the normal way? C-H. <laughs> just, just, yeah. Just classic. C-H-O-C-O-L-A-T-E-F-A-N-T-A-S-Y. How many is this? 16. 11. Right. Ready? Yep. Go. Okay. Oh! What the fuck? It's redirected. Wait, not, re- it's not redirected. It's got. It's taken us to the Training Oasis, Inc., Experimental learning, experiential Toronto. learning in Toronto. Out experiential. of the box strategies. These are very old photographs. We are a what Toronto-based consulting firm specializing in experiential learning and instructional design. All inquiries are handled from Toronto. See, you were you were reading into it. You were trying to suggest that I had some kind of weird pornographic, uh, you know, proclivity, which I think was we, coming out. I think in we here. all know. Yeah, and um, I what? was just keen on finding a Toronto experiential learning facilitator. I love that someone in this team was like, "Chocolate fantasy." We need a short now URL. <laughs> There's chocolate fantasy available. Yeah, get that. Yeah. Wow. Okay, so you win. So you got that one. Yeah. Do we do three. Yeah, we do three. So I um, right. I successfully got a redirect. That's sixteen points to me, zero points to you. You're still in the game. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right, I got one. B I T. Dot L Y yep. slash yep. anal jizz. Anal jizz? Jizz. Jizz spelled j- just a classic J I double Z. Yeah. Yeah. Um, J-I-Z. So this, 
because it's very deliberately, I think, pornographic, this is not going to get you double points. Not necessarily. Not necessarily. What's the non-pornographic way that this is going to? Could be medical. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. I don't know what you're thinking. (laughs) Sure. (laughs) Sure. Um, well, I think I'm still going to invoke this. This can't be double points. I'm sorry. This is a deliberate play here. Fine. Okay. Um, that is that is a respectable eight. Respectable eight. I'm just going to pop this in the uh, in my notes. I'm just notes curious, here. to be honest. Okay. Um, I bet you are. Here we go. A bit.ly slash anal jizz. Three, two, one. Oh, bitly Fucking failure. Hell. A bitly 404. 404. No one has ever used bit.ly slash anal jizz. So you've actually lost. Well, they should. You've lost eight points. You're now negative eight. Oh. Do we have a bitly? Because I think maybe <laughs> we, we do. Found one. If you go to bit.ly slash bitly ball, it will actually <laughs> send us uh, send you to us. Can we can we take anal jizz as well? Um, we could do. It'll actually take you to bitlyball.com, <laughs> which I forgot that I bought. <laughs> and then redirect you. <laughs> and then redirect you. Um, okay, that's that's a tough, tough, tough break there. Um, tough all righty. Uh, let me... Oh, my God, Michael. Um, let me think here. Okay. Yeah, I feel like I feel like I got one. I feel like I'm pretty pretty confident on this one hit me fatty bit.ly slash george clooney lawyer what a lawyer george clooney lawyer okay that's right you're thinking uh i'm taking a swing it's a march i've got i've got a fairly big lead here so i'm just taking a swing can you can you take us through what you're thinking because I'm just what's the lawyer like edition? There might either be a story about a George Clooney, you know, the the movie star situation where he needed a lawyer or there was some sort of lawyer involved in a divorce or, in a, you know, I don't know if he's been divorced, but whatever, you know, some kind of legal issue. So maybe that's just like he a hasn't. news organization is shortened for that purpose. Or yeah. there might just be another guy called George Clooney who is a lawyer and just needed it something for his website. I mean, your confidence doesn't seem to match, you know, the expectation here. I don't think. Okay. Well, it's a, tw- it's a nineteen. So. All right. Let's you know. go. Bang. I'm in four o four, my friend. Mm. Okay. That feels so like what, what? What? What's the points game? That's um. That's unfortunate. So that's dropped me down. 19, which means I'm at negative 3. You're at negative 8. I'm winning. You're uh, not. You don't know how numbers work. <laughs> I, don't, I have no idea. Okay. Still anyone's right, game I here. I need to swing for the for the fences here. Yeah. Baseball term. Baseball. All right. Can, you, can, I, can I take a second? You can take a second. You can take it as long as you want, as long as it's like three or four seconds. I'm thinking something along the lines of um, stepson or stepmother or... Okay. <laughs> Feels again... Not, not porn. Not porn. Uh, um, well, okay. Something like... Oh, how about this? Okay. How about... And it's not porn. Okay. Really. I'm not thinking porn at all. No. I'm not thinking about porn. Sure. Naughty... <laughs> Step, step brother. No, stepsister. Stepsister. Okay. Naughty stepsister. And again, yep. so you're not, not thinking porn. about porn. Familial. So what What are you thinking about? Sometimes you have a stepsister uh-huh. and they're up to no good. Uh-huh. And yeah. in what kind of way are they up to no good? Like uh, stealing your taking their clothes and off. stuff. Yeah, taking your clothes, taking their clothes off. Yeah, trying to give you hand jobs. Okay, so those last ones, they seem <laughs> quite 
sort of they're but, within that boundary of if you're if you could think about it like that, but like if in a real life situation, uh huh, it's very it can be very unwanted and cause a rift within the family. So it's uh-huh. actually kind of it's a kind of a delicate situation. Sure, you know, as um, is much pornography. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Well, that's a 17. Um, let's see how you go with this because uh, anal jizz didn't get you very far. Um, it never does. Okay. Here we go. Three, two, one. Oh! That's a fail. That's a 404, what? my friend. That's a 404. A complete. Oh, that's three strikes. A complete wash. Um, so yes, minus 17 on your minus eight brings you down to minus 25 to my minus three. I got a fairly, I like that I can still win though. I got a fairly strong lead here. If I guess a 23 letter phrase here that fails, you're still in with a chance. (laughs) Can you please? (laughs) Just to make it interesting. Um, I mean, I think I've been generous with some of my big swings previously. Um, do I want to really rub salt in the wound? What about rub salt in the wound? Okay, well, let's see how long that is. It's only an eighteen. Right. Mm. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, unfortunately, rub your fucking face in it. Bit.ly slash there will be blood. Beating me on my own turf. Yeah, that's that's rich, man. Well, sometimes you got to play to win, fucker. Sorry, I didn't mean it. I didn't mean it. I I don't know where that came from. By the way, what do you think of my haircut? I didn't realize you had a haircut. Yeah, no one does. Are you are you playing? Are you typing this in? Oh yeah, shit. <laughs> Sorry. No, I, <laughs> I was looking at myself in Skype. Um, <laughs> I was like, that's a good haircut. Um, Did you have that today? All right. I haven't seen you in three no, weeks, yeah. so I don't know what it was before. There will be blood. Yeah. B-O-T to L-Y-A. Yeah. Oh, 404. But a weird 404. It's a folio.com. Oh, it's a neutral. Yeah. It's so weekly. It's, no. it's redirected. It yeah. says 404 though, bro. I know, but remember the rules, Michael. If it redirects you to a different address, you're at folioweekly.com, not bit.ly. Mate, That's just you a got neutral. a 404. Oh, my God. You, you lose. Are so, you are so against. So I'm so what? I'm so why what? are you not in? Why do you try For, and be this? I, listen why to you the try rules and be of, this? Why, listen to the rules at the start of the game. Okay. What does 404 mean to For, you within the context of the rules? Does the it mean, rules are if you get redirected to another website, but that page that no longer 404 loads. 404 with a frowny face. No, don't try and rejig the rules to make me lose points. Even if I did lose points, it's still not enough points for you to win. Is there or is there not a 404 clause yes, of course, in the rules? Of course, but it's for Bitly. It's not for other websites. You're a fucking nerd. You know that? Hey, I can't deal with you like this. <laughs> you need to go. Fine. You need to go lie down. You need to go sit in Wait, the naughty are, corner. Are we arguing over how much how or how little I'll lose by? 